Okay, so... The shape's coming along, but it's still kind of boxy, don't you think? You can sort of see a corner coming out here. So, I think what we should do is um, take this edge and take this edge and kind of scooch them away from those corner pieces. And uh, we can do that really quickly by converting this to a face path and then just scaling these faces down. You can see those edges are following. And let's give that a shot. Yeah, so that's looking a lot more rounded here, which is exactly what we want to do. It's looking pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to grab that top edge here, and I'm going to extrude it. So we're not extruding faces anymore, but actually extruding edges. It's kind of the same thing, just a little bit different in the way you approach it. So this row of faces is going to turn into this little bump right here. And then this one will be this little guy. Oops. So I've accidentally added a, a span right here, which if I were to smooth this, you can see it's kind of a bad idea because it adds that little bump there. So I'm going to make sure we take that out. Bring this down just a little bit. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make that extrusion now. So I'm going to convert that to a face path. Extrude the face, bring it out, and let's just scale it down a little bit too. That might be perfect for our little rounded bump there. And I'll just add a little edge here. Scale that out. Here's another bug that happens sometimes with the Insert Edge Loop tool. If you insert an edge like this and then you scale it immediately, you can see that it's scaling things that aren't supposed to be scaled. Uh, so you just deselect everything and make that selection again. And you won't have any problem. Oops. Okay, so. Okay. So let's just bring this up. Maybe not quite that high. And uh, now we're going to do something unique, which is we're actually going to create a second cylinder and attach it to the first one, which is going to be uh, a new experience for you guys. And it's always kind of weird to wrap your head around uh, what's happening here. So if it seems kind of odd to you, then don't worry. Uh, maybe it won't be so odd, though. Maybe it'll be intuitive. Let's see. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple edges to this uh, area, which is where the uh, second cylinder is generally going to attach. Looks pretty close. And uh, now what I'm going to do is create a new cylinder. Pull it out here. I'm going to rotate it onto its side. Oops. So that'll be 90 degrees. And uh, I want to make sure that it's not too big. Looks like it might actually be a little bit smaller. Something like that should work just fine. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of the faces on the inside. I'm going to select everything and then deselect these faces. And just delete that so it becomes an open face. And I'll do the same thing on this side too for now. So the key is when you're attaching something like this, you want to make sure that you're lining things up so that you have an edge for every edge that you're meeting. Um, so in this case, we may have to move things around a little bit. Maybe I should scale this up just a bit. OK, so this edge will meet this one. This one will bring over a little bit to meet these two like this. And as far as the other ones, 
instead of pulling this one all the way down here, I'm going to start adding some edges along the uh, other axis here. And we use the slide edge tool to get them to be lined up perfectly. That's actually pretty close. But if I were to add one here, you can always go to the slide edge tool, which is in the edit mesh menu. For me, it's on a hotkey. Now I can begin dragging this along. There we go. So we got something like that. Now at this point, I'm going to begin working on just half of the model because this is a completely symmetrical piece. What I can do is I can cut it in half. Why don't we do this? I'll grab that edge loop and I'm going to run this tool, with my hotkey, just to break it out from the bottom. And now I'm going to break it up again by selecting both sides of it like this and then running the tool again and breaking that off. Alternatively, you could just select the faces on this side and delete them. It's the same difference. I'll do the same thing for this piece. And then after I do the attachment, we'll mirror it back over and then combine it. So it'll be like we worked on both sides. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'm going to grab the uh, vertices of this piece and just begin scaling them in so that they are more or less touching the uh, outside of the first cylinder here. If I wanted to I could take this a step further and work on just the top half here and then mirror that down and then mirror that across but uh, I won't do that right now. Okay, so I can now go into the face mode of this object and get rid of these for sure. I'll delete those away. We bring this down so that these are touching. get this as close as I can here. Get these as close as I can. Uh, this face, actually, I'm going to delete, get rid of these. Add a line here. Actually, that one should stay up here. And actually, you know, I'm going to back up and do this a slightly different way. Let me put these faces back where they were. Okay, instead, let's go into our split polygon tool. So I've got mine hotkeyed to S, but yours is going to be under Edit Mesh if you haven't moved it. And let's begin cutting in a ring that goes around and touches this piece. So this edge is already pretty close, so I'm just going to lead off from that one. I'm going to touch that vertice, exit the tool, and go back into it. And let's just cut in this ring that goes around. There we go. 
and then I'll cut in one uh, that's even closer to it here. So you remember how I was saying that every uh, corner or edge you have on your model should have three edges holding it down. This will be no different. So in this case we're going to have one edge on the horizontal part, one edge that actually makes up the turn right here, and then one edge around the uh, base here. Okay, so now I can delete these faces on the inside. This will be a bit cleaner. And grow that selection out until it's gone. Okay, and now I'm going to snap these points. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, hold down the V button, and actually snap these points to meet these points. I'll leave this one for now. Snap that, leave this one for now. Snap that one, snap this one here, and this one here. Okay, so now I can get rid of this edge with the Delete Edge tool. This one. And now we should be pretty much good to go. Yeah, so let's just attach this and see what we get. So I know these points are completely tangent, or they were almost completely tangent. You can see that I've got this highlighted edge here. Just gonna grab those two vertices and merge them together. Oh, by the way, uh, if your edges on your model are not highlighted like this, then do me a favor and go into your preferences real quick and go to polygons and uh, highlight border edge. So if I turn this off, you can see the difference. No, it looks the same. Well, it should change. <laughs> but anyway, border edges, if you keep that on, and you can play with the edge width here, which doesn't seem to be doing anything on my computer for some reason. Um, but anyway, that's where the setting is. It may be, actually, it may be dependent upon whether or not this geometry gets created after I save those, that is why it's not changing, but anyway. So anyway, I've got that attached. Now I can preview this and see what it looks like. So there you go. The result is pretty clean looking. There's a nice little sweep here that's relatively consistent um, across that whole piece, which is really what we wanted to go for. And now that I've done that side, I can duplicate this over, change the pivot to the top point here, or really any point where it's symmetrically uh, cut, duplicate it, scale it over, negative 1 in the scale. Now we can combine this. And there we go. So um, a couple housekeeping tips here. You see how I've created these triangles inadvertently? That's okay I suppose, but in practice it's better if you can eliminate triangles uh, whenever you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I see that I have two triangles here, so I know that I can draw a line through here and connect them to turn them into a quad. Just like that. So now you can see I can get rid of these two edges, delete those, and now I've just got this clean line. So that's more desirable uh, for many reasons that we'll get into, but as you can see, when you look at the wireframe here, when you smooth it, this is just a nice cleaner flowing set of edges. Whereas this one is pinching down, you've got these sharp spikes, and it's just a little bit less uniform. So again, it doesn't really matter on a model like this, but in general you want to try and do this, uh, because there will be situations later where it does matter. Okay, so then let's work on this cap piece. 
So let's bring this back because it's actually not that long. Really, it just goes to about there. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is model this cap as a separate piece. And uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because just by looking at it, I can tell that I'm going to need to have more resolution on this piece than I do need on this piece. And uh, we could just do it all in one piece and up the resolution for this piece as well. But really that's kind of wasteful if you don't need to do it. And uh, the reason I don't think we need to do it is because I've got this break here where I can hide the difference of... I can hide the fact that they're two separate objects by, by doing this. So first let's close this off. Let's extrude that in like that. And that's good for now. And let's go ahead and create yet another cylinder. We'll rotate this one by 90 degrees in the X. Just do some rough eyeballing here. 